guys. So this is class number two. It's the Mixed Media Mayhem class. Um, I did two things in it. Um, but I, there were some technical issues with Zoom. And <coughs> this kind of got screwed up. issues so my students weren't able to come to the class which kind of sucks because I had to refund everything um, which is really great when you're when you don't have money so um, I'd like to remind everybody to please um, support my GoFundMe which is linked down in the bottom it will help me um, to get a studio to work out of and to record out of and to teach out of, um, and to sew from, so, um, I can no longer have to keep everything in my bedroom, which is kind of, like, full of all, bo all my art supplies and boxes of art supplies and stuff right now, as is most of my house, after I had to move stuff home from how, um, but yeah, link in the description, please, please, um, I've already got, like, almost a third of the goal and the goal is about um, for maybe a third of the year's rent so if I can get more than the goal then I won't have to worry about rent for as long and then if I can get enough for rent for maybe six months to a year then I'll start like using the GoFundMe money for um, what's it called oh yeah supplies which are <laughs> expensive too so can help that would be great if you can't help please share the link also if you buy things from my store or my red bubble or my shop or my spa not my shopify not my spa by my society six page uh, my uh, t public page if you buy from any of those that would really help too because then the money can go there or you can donate um, through venmo or cash app or PayPal um, those links are in the description too and then I have my other things like a wish list that has supplies and stuff and non it also has personal items on it so, um, those are also linked and I will link to all of the supplies that I use in the videos down there too and if you buy anything from Amazon through those links, then I can also get money that way. So, you know, lots of ways to help. So, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey guys. Um, the first painting that we're going to do is called Fairy Lane. Uh, I was just feeling kind of like using fairies today. Here are the supplies you need canvas panel, three to four colors in a color family, scrapbook paper, lace for washi tape, stencils, Mod Podge, and a paint scraper or brush. And I was basically telling the students right there what to expect, which is basically what I'm doing right now. Now first you want to take your um, paint and apply it to the paint to the canvas panel before you spread it around with your scraping tool. You can pick which color you want to have as your predominant color. Um, I went with blue and with the green as kind of a backing color. Um, I used cerulean blue, turquoise, 
um, phthalo blue and like sap green. Sounds about right. Looks kind of like about right too because it's got that kind of poopy green color. Um, I scraped with these silicone uh, paint scraping tools that I got from Amazon. And yes, they will be linked below. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I covered the entire page. Then I went back to cover up some of the white spots and put the same colors over and scraped again. This time with a smaller version of the paint tool. Um, with this particular kind of paint tool, you can just like wash it off or scrape it off when you're done. I unfortunately did not get mine completely uh, cleaned off afterward, but that's okay. See, you're applying your paint with your spreading or with your scraping tool, and then you're going to cut off some scrapbook paper into pieces. Place it on the canvas in different spots and use um, your scraper to smooth the paper down and to get rid of all the bubbles. So you see me doing the, the spreading right now, um, but I'm about to put the paint down to put some paper. Um, I was trying to cover up some of the different spots that I could see the white poking through because it was just kind of bothering me right then. And um, I had fun doing this even <laughs> even if there were technical difficulties. But um, I used some butterfly scrapbook paper there and I cut some of it and I tore some of it because I wanted different looks. Um, the one thing I have noticed with some of the scrapbook paper is if you tear it, sometimes it seems like it kind of degrades the paper's ability to stay together. So it can kind of tear if you scrape it too much on the um, panel. So be careful with that. Don't scrape it a lot. Just kind of smooth it out. Be gentle with your paper. Um, I painted the back of the scra scrapbook paper with the paint um, to kind of act as a glue. You don't have to cover the entire piece. You can just do little spots. But the more you have on there, like the, the more covered it is on the back, the more it's going to stick because acrylic paint is very, um, well, sticky. Um, but I went in and I did that with several pieces. Some I didn't put quite as much paint on as others. And um, in the end, those are the ones that typically had a little bit more air bubbles going on, but it's okay. I got most of those taken care of. Sorry if you just heard me kind of burp. This, um, I got this paper from Amazon, and also I will be linking it, of course. Um, but I think you can get the same brand at Walmart for about the same price about five dollars for a pack so that's pretty that's pretty nifty probably would have stayed together better if I had um, used a, a higher priced one but that's okay I don't need to have a higher priced one if you want to have a higher priced one you can do that I don't know why I just went with that accent but I'm owning it So, it's surprising I actually have paper towels. I didn't have those in my acrylic painting class earlier in the day. And that made life a lot more fun. Okay, so I'm like taking some of the paper up, or some of the paint up with the paper towel because um, I covered like way too thick. And then I started placing some more and smoothing it. Ooh, super fun. Um, then I got out my washi tape, which also doubles as lace, and I cut a piece, um, like I said, add your washi tape or your lace, or your lace washi tape right about now, um, cut it into whatever size piece that you want to go with, 
and I put mine down in the corner for my first piece. And I was using some blue washi tape that has a little heart lace on it. It's really cute. I will try to remember to take a picture of it one day and post it on like my Instagram or something so you guys can see it. Um, but I also got it from Amazon. I do a lot of Amazon shopping. I, I feel like maybe Jeff Bezos should like give me a shout out or something. Just kidding. Um, but no. um, I got out my stencils about then. I hadn't decided at this point if I was going to do like butterflies and fairies and you can pick out what you want and the colors you want to use with it and apply it with either a scraper or a brush or if you have a dauber you can use that too and like I said I chose fairies and butterflies here and I chose hexagons for my little shape and I went in with uh, the green right here on the hexagons and just smoothed it over with my paint scraper which it's a good way to kind of get a thin layer on really well um, what you're doing this for is to add texture a lot of mixed media work is about texture and so you want to build up the different kinds of texture um, then I got my fairies out and I got out my copper paint um, it's artist loft so it did not come from Amazon it came from the Michaels and I painted my different fairies on with the copper paint and I used a brush for them so that I could make sure that I got every little bit like covered properly and then I used the copper again for the butterfly up here in the corner and I used a scraper that time and I just kind of liked the way that it gave me a kind of, I don't know, a metallic-y pop of something. <laughs> uh, I really encourage you to use an extra metallic paint or an extra paint that stands out from your three to four that I suggested uh, to kind of make it stand out. You want to have something that makes it really your own. So for me, that, that typically is a metallic. I don't know why. I love shiny, iridescent-y, metallic -y goodness, and I always have. So I guess it's kind of like why I like wearing a lot of glitter. It's just what I do. Um, now you can add in more scrap bigger scrapbook paper if you need to to try and get more texture more of whatever you feel is missing um, you can add in more stencils if you want or more wash tape you can add in more paint colors um, just it, you know what your art needs more than I know <laughs> what your art needs and um, don't be too critical of yourself when you're doing it now if you have a textured scraper you can use it to create more texture and more grooves in your painting which will also give more depth and like I said earlier the mixed media is a lot it really focuses on different textures so having these little claw type um, texture things from the scraper it makes it look different it makes it look more abstract it makes it look more like there's movement and it just gives your art a little something more and that that's a big thing for me is to make sure that the art is conveying enough like that it's giving exactly the kind of movement and color story and everything that I want it to be giving and sometimes I mean not know when I start what exactly I want from it that's okay I mean if you're starting to do something that you really want um, to look a certain way yeah you need to plan that out but if you're just kind of putting something together to try and learn 
or to grow or just to explore, um, then it's okay not to know it ahead of time. It's okay to just trust your gut. Sometimes you learn a lot more that way than like if you focus really hard and try to pressure yourself into doing something with your art that you don't really want to do even or you don't know how to do. You know, just be true to you, I guess. This has kind of turned into some kind of weird uh, pep talk, I guess. But it's a good reminder. And, you know, it's not going to be perfect because nothing in life is perfect. And that's okay. You know, we've all got to learn to accept when we aren't perfect and to learn and grow from that. So I think this was around the time that I realized that there wasn't much more I could do with that one. So I moved to a smaller one. But let's check out and see what this pretty little painting is going to look like. Well, we'll know in a minute. As soon as I stop scraping things. Um, but, uh, if you have any questions, like in the comments, feel free to ask. If you have any comments in the comments, feel free to leave them. I uh, always try to like like if you like it and let me know if you don't like it like what you would like to see on this channel see all the pretties mm -hmm. very ethereal but also kind of grungy and natural and like something clawed its way <laughs> I don't know I, I like it and I guess that's really what matters, is that the artist likes it. Although it's really cool when other people like it. Like, if you like it, that, that's good too. Uh, oh gosh, I sound so pathetic here, don't I? Oh god. Okay, so next, you need to apply Mod Podge or another sealer when your paint is dry. Don't do it before then causes madness, messiness. And now we're doing embellished geometry. Here are the supplies you need. This time I used a clay board. And then three to four colors in a color family. Scrapbook paper, lace or washi tape, stencils, paint scraper, Mod Podge. This is basically the same steps and, but with clay board. And wet acrylic paint does not cling to clay board in the same way that canvas does. So you may have to um, retouch it more often or you may end up with texture you weren't expecting. This time I used a 5x7 instead of a 9x12 too. So it did not give me as much room so I had to kind of explore things in a very small uh, area which is fine. I actually kind of like the smaller ones too. It's just harder to use for classes because there's not as much that you can like point out to students. Um, but I used the blue and green that I used for the first one. Then I started cutting out some striped scrapbook paper and some graph looking scrapbook paper and I applied it. I was feeling more into geometric shapes for this particular piece. Um, I wanted kind of to go with a butterfly on it too, but I kind of screwed up when I went to it, so I think that's why I moved to, uh, the geometric too, because I just kind of got annoyed with the butterfly theme when my stints and then didn't work, which was totally on me because I did not wait long enough and I did not use it properly. So, you gotta be patient when you're making your art, or else you're gonna mess things up. These little pep talks might not apply to you, but they definitely apply to me. See, there I go. 
the problem with this was that I put in the green and the copper so it actually kind of mixed it all together and it was not a good look no, nope, 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 and there it goes scraping it it kind of blends it in and I decided to try one more time and it still wasn't any good so there it goes scraping it um, then I took a different stencil and just used that to scrape into the green and I liked how that looked it has this kind of scallop look so I added that twice and then I went back through with some more paper and started putting little pieces of paper around it and cutting some into like triangles and little rhombus and other terms you forget once you're out of high school and I just like stuck I stuck the graph ones down and then I put the stripes down on top to try and give it kind of an alternating look and it looks really cool you don't really think of combining like black and white graph paper with bright color stripes but it works it's always amazing what can work together and then I started smoothing it out and kind of bringing the paint up into it and I just didn't want to overwork it too much and I didn't want to lose all of the um, stenciled in part so I was very careful and then I added more paper in and I started adding in um, small pieces of some copper lace washi tape and it's okay if you get a little paint on the washi tape it still looks really cool and, um, so it's really it's really easy to do this particular one after doing the first one um, so I would recommend that anybody who's out there looking into different types of um, art to start off with try mixed media it, it's not as strict um, rules wise as like anything especially not watercolor but like it's really easy and it's really fun and I went in with my scrapers and like added a little more texture in added some more stenciling this time with some blue and it just looks really it looks really cool and fun and it feels really cool and fun to make and that's kind of what matters right um, let me do the typical self-promotion thing again. If you like the video, like. If you want to subscribe, please do so. And click the notification bell so that, you know, you come back whenever I make a new video. Um, you can ask me comments. Or you can ask me questions. You can make comments and thing. You can make requests for future um, tutorials, for future videos, you know, anything. Tell me what's going on in your life. <laughs> Just, you know. I want this to be a place where people have fun. So, um, yeah, it should be. Yeah, I was trying to add a little more texture in again, right there, and add in a little bit of copper, give it a little more zest. And I needed more paper towels at this point, but I was out of them. <laughs> so, but I hope you like this. I know I like it. So, that, that's important. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. The video on fun with acrylic paint should be up soon. But, um, if it takes me a day or so, please don't get too mad. Um, I'll see you guys then. Have a good rest of your weekend. Love you. Even if I don't know you. <laughs> Bye.